Hello, 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 my friend. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for showing up. And to all of those beautiful, gorgeous stacks of hot cakes that are watching me right now that have watched me and watched me and watched me. Hello, my friend. I am back from Mexico. What a beautiful wedding. I cannot wait to show you all the pictures. I'm working on something now so that I can include it hopefully in my next video. But it was amazing. Oh, this place was gorgeous. So I'll just leave it at that and tell you that I have some videos coming to you. So those that won a, a painting from me during my live auction a few weeks ago, you should all have your paintings by now. Um, hopefully they all got there okay and you all loved them as much as I did. Thank you again for that. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of aid you along into doing a very simple acrylic pour. If you're a beginner, this will be a good video for you. Um, just know also under the playlists tab on my channel. There are a ton of learning videos. There's a, a section called Back to Basics Beginner Styles videos. Those are really, really thorough. Most every video I put out though, with a, an exception of a few here and there, are all learning tutorials. So if you're ever in the need of something, let's say you want to learn how to do the pearl pour and you need a, a video that shows you step-by-step step how to do a pearl pour. You could always type in on YouTube search, Tammy Anderson Art Pearl Pour, or how to do a pearl pour, or you can email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com, and I will forward you a video if I have one. I've done pretty much every technique out there, so if you're in the need and you need help, let me know. I also want to thank you for watching my three-part series on this Kintsugi style art. I had a blast making these pieces. If you did not see the three videos, there's a video on this one. And I just wanted to show you these quick because they're just so pretty, I think. And um, I really, really love this style of art. Then there was this pink one. That was video number one. This is video number two. And then video number three was this pyramid where I used real abalone shell uh, paper. They take real shell and they crush it somehow into a paper. And that's what this is right here. So you can see how beautiful I put little inlays of that in there. So if you didn't check out those videos, they are the last three videos that I did. And these pieces are available for purchase. If you're interested, just email me. What I do want to ask of you, though, is in the comments, let me know, do you like that kind of art? Do you like mixed media? Do you want to see more mixed media on this channel along with acrylic pouring? Uh, are you over acrylic pouring? Like, have you learned it all and you just want to learn how to maybe do an acrylic pour and, and, and embellish it, maybe take it to the next step? Let me know in the comments, okay? So here is a 16 inch round from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to tape off the back and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I'm mixing my paints and how to create a really simple, lovely piece of art. Okay, so before I forget, I have a major announcement at the end of this video you are not going to want to miss. It's, I'm very excited to tell you guys this, so make sure you stick around to the end. So with this painting here, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're a stickler for measurements and you want to know precisely how much, go to artresin.com. That's right, artresin.com. At the bottom, you're going to see a calculator. Put in the dimensions of your canvas. If it's a round, I would put in... 16 by 16. It will tell you, if you are using resin, how much 
resin you would need to cover this size canvas. Just do that and use your use that for your acrylic paint. So if it says you need seven ounces to cover this of resin, mix up seven ounces of white paint for your canvas. I, however, never measure for the base. I just pour it on, tilt it around, and when it's covered, it's covered. You obviously don't want, you know, a big thick puddle of paint sitting on the canvas. You just want to tilt it around till the paint drips off and the canvas is fully covered. All right, there is no depth to the paint per se. So now when it comes to your colors, I'm going to show you how I mixed all of my colors for this. I'll show you the colors also, but for those that want to use measurements. Now, I never do use measurements I'll use them if I'm teaching, but in personal life, when I'm just making art, I never use measurements. Measurements for your, your paint and your flow trawl really are not important. It's how much water you put in there that's important. So I've got this beautiful burnt orange by Modern Masters. I'm going to add in a tablespoon worth of this paint into this cup. And of course, this is all approximate. All you have to do is add in two times the amount of American Floetrol or Liquitex pouring medium if you're using that. Or if you're using glue and water, you put in the glue and water mixture that you made. So it all depends on whichever medium you're using. You're going to put in double the amount that you do of acrylic paint. So because I used one tablespoon of that paint, I'm now going to use two tablespoons of Floetrol. All right, and then you're gonna mix it. And depending on what technique you're doing and the brand of paint that you're using, your paint may be ready to pour at this point. So if I was going to do something like a flip cup or a straight pour, uh, any of the, the techniques really besides a Dutch pour, uh, um, bloom pour, or a pearl pour, this is the consistency of paint that you want. So if you're struggling with consistency, you can A, use the consistency chart that I have in the description of the video. And there's a video that teaches you how to use that chart. Or you can get something like a Modern Masters and use the exact measurement that I just did with Floetrol and paint. And then you'll be able to tell how thick my paint is, okay? But again, that's for regular style acrylic pours. Nothing that requires a really thin paint like a Dutch pour or a pearl pour. So that is how all of my paints are mixed. Except today I am doing... A blowout so I need the paint to be a little bit thinner so it will move now don't get me wrong I can still move this thick paint with a powerful blow dryer but you don't want to have to struggle you want it to flow freely over the white base paint so here is a pipette now if this was heavy body paint it would take a lot more water that's why it's important if you're a beginner to try to find something that one of us uses in these videos just to teach yourself what the proper consistency is so if you went out and got a modern masters paint or even deco art 24 karat gold or the deco art in the bottles or craft smart apple barrel they're all this same type of of fluidity so if you did this measurement, you would know what the paints should feel like, okay? So I have officially added 30, three zero drops of water to this cup of paint. And now we are where we're at, okay? So once you get that first paint mixed up and you get it to the right consistency, no matter the brand, the color, um, you're going to put them all line up in a cup, line them all up in a cup, Put a tablespoon of paint, two tablespoons of Floetrol into each color, and then you're going to adjust the water accordingly. Do you need more? Do you need less? Depending on the brand of paint. 
So now that I have that mixed up, I'm going to go ahead, show you the colors I'm using. This is going to be a very classy blowout. I'm looking for maybe just the edges. I don't know. I'm going to kind of feel, feel it out as I go. So this is English Brown by Modern Masters. So I believe this one is called Ember Fire Prism Pour, or it could be Ambrosia. And then, this is Mayan Gold Prism Pour. Okay? So the, that's the palette. I have Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White um, mixed with, again, Floetrol and Water. All are mixed with American Floetrol. So here we go. Right in the center of the canvas, I'm going to pour my white paint. And then I'm just going to tilt around until the entire canvas is covered. I'm going to make sure I pop all of those air bubbles. You can see them all um, because I just mixed up this paint. If you don't feel like you're going to have enough, like I know I'm not going to have enough, just add a little bit more and keep tilting. So now as for layering your colors, today I'm using all metallics, but let's say you have some metallics and some just plain, you know, regular tube paint colors. What you would typically do is put down a tube paint color, then a metallic, sandwich those metallics in between the, the regular colors, and they will create a lot of cells. Now I'm using nothing but metallics, so I'm gonna get cells either way, but if you are using a combination of both types of paint, I highly suggest placing them in between two paint colors. Now, the first color you put down when you blow paint out is going to be the color that outlines a majority of the pattern. So you have to kind of envision what you're looking for here. So for me, I'm looking for probably, here, let's go with, the copper color for Ember Fire. And I'm just going to place it right here to start. Just like so. Just like that. Let's do a crescent moon. burnt orange next believe it or not I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of white that's it just like that Then I'll put down some of the beautiful brown. Some of the gold. And I think we're going to stop right there. Give that a shot first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my torch again. Give it a little pop one more time to get rid of the air bubbles. And then I'm going to start here and blow this this way, come up this way maybe. Okay? And then we'll we'll assess once we blow it out.
So here's what I want to do. The orientation I want this painting to, to hang in is like this. I want this to be the actual bottom part. So let me spin that around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little here and have this come out just a little bit more. So I'm just going to take my paint again. We're going to start right here. Blow off of this leaf right here. And then uh, continue on. And I'll give this a once over again. And here we go. Alrighty, so that's better. Let me just use the white paint now to blow this back a little bit and shape it a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. Very simple, yet elegant looking. Just a few colors, nothing outrageous. I will show you it with the flash on in a minute here. But yeah, I, I hope you try this, especially if you're struggling with the Dutch pour. Try just doing the outer edge like this. It, it's much easier, okay? And it'll get you used to working with the blow dryer and moving the paint in different directions, things like that. So here we are with some flash. And once it dries, I'll resin it and show it in the, in a future video. I just got back from vacation, so I don't have videos built up yet to where I could show them finished, so please bear with me. If you're interested in this piece, shoot me an email, artbytammy at yahoo.com or the other three pieces that I showed you in the beginning of the video. So, I said I had an announcement. Well, here's a little hint for you. I'm going to be saying y'all pretty soon because I'm coming to teach a class in Texas. Yes, I am. So, if you are in Texas, information is going to come out very soon. I am going to be teaching a dual class with Miss Erica Bauer from Artists of Death. So not only will you get me, but you're also going to get Miss Beautiful Erica, who just got married. Congratulations, Erica. Uh, teaching you resin. So I hope this will make some of you happy. And another announcement I have to make is I am going to start traveling to do some of these classes across the country that I promised. So in the comments below, make sure to comment if you would be interested in a class. What part of the country are you in? What I'm going to do is pick five major cities, we'll say across the United States, and you know, book some classes. Just me, just me, an all day class with just me. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But again, I'm going to be doing this class in the next. I would say four months with Miss Erica Bauer. So I'm going to get that information out to you this next coming week of the whens and wheres and how to register and all that. Just keep in mind that will be happening in the beautiful state of Texas, y'all. This Northeast girl is going to get herself a pair of cowboy boots. Don't tell my husband I'm going to also get myself a cowboy. <laughs> 
Um, and I'm going to come visit you in your beautiful state. And there's a possibility of two classes, one in the Dallas area and one in the Sagoin area. So I will let you know as soon as I have that information next week. I love you all. Thank you for watching today. And until the next time, happy pouring.